In a moment, we're going to walk through how to create D&D's most powerful character ever, Pun-Pun. Pun-Pun was a kobold. Well, at first. In actuality, Pun-Pun could be whatever he liked. He could give himself arbitrarily high ability scores, infinitely large skill checks, he could attack anyone from anywhere, and he could give himself any ability in the game, and possibly any ability outside the game. How is this possible? Well, Pun-Pun grew up in a very specific rules environment that has left its mark on Dungeons & Dragons and other tabletop RPGs for over a decade now, so allow me to explain to you that environment to give you the proper context for Pun-Pun's creation. In 1997, TSR, the company that Gary Gygax created specifically to publish Dungeons & Dragons, went under. Wizards of the Coast came in, though, and bought it up, and soon thereafter released their third edition of the Dungeons & Dragons game. And shortly after that, the third and a half edition of the game. Along with this new edition came a whole slew of supplementary rulebooks. These were splat books that covered ideas and topics that the official rules hadn't covered yet. There was a book all about adventuring at sea, a book all about dungeon delving, a book of special arms and equipment, and so on. By August of 2005, Wizards of the Coast had released over 52 splat books over five years. And these books gave lots of tools to character optimizers. These are players who want to create their characters in the most effective, most powerful way possible. It's a very popular pastime, and there was an entire board in the official Wizards of the Coast forums dedicated to character optimization. And it was on this board that Pun Pun was born, in a thread by Khan the Destroyer, appropriately titled the most powerful character ever. When Khan originally posted his build to the board, Pun Pun had to wait until level 12 to become all-powerful, but working with the other optimizers, they were able to get that dumber down to level 5, and then eventually all the way to level 1. We're going to go over the level 5 build because I think that best demonstrates the rules environment that created Pun Pun at the time, but you should go and read the level 1 build yourself. It's a very entertaining read. There's a link to it in the description. All right, here we go. Let's make the most powerful D&D character ever. To begin, we are a level one kobold wizard named Pun Pun, but we are a special kind of kobold because 3.5 rules allowed players to change their base stats with modifications called templates. Templates were used to turn humans into werewolves, bears into zombie bears, halflings into amphibious halflings, and so on. In our case, we are modifying Pun Pun with the Divine Minion template, which was published on the Wizards of the Coast website at the time. As a divine minion, we gain the supernatural ability to wild shape as if we were a druid of 11th level, and as a level 1 wizard, we get a feat, we'll choose endurance, and a familiar, we'll choose a sweet little viper friend. Then we go out, beat up some monsters, level up to level 2. At level 2, we don't level up as a wizard, but instead, we'll take a level in a prestige class. Prestige classes were a specialized kind of class you could take in 3.5. They had a small amount of thematic specialized abilities, and they had requirements that you had to meet in your character build before you could take them. Prestige classes were the bread and butter of character customization in 3.5. The prestige class Pun Pun wants is called the Master of Many Forms, a prestige class from the book Complete Adventurer. A Master of Many Forms specializes in wild shaping, and to be a Master of Many Forms you need the Endurance Feat, check, the ability to wild shape, check, and the alertness feat. We might seem to be missing that third requirement, but the rules for familiars in 3.5 tell us that as long as our familiar is within arm's reach, we have the alertness feat too. So we take our level of master of many forms, which gives us lots of fun toys to play with while we continue to adventure and gain experience and level up to level 5, where the real fun begins. A third level master of many forms gains the ability to wild shape into monstrous humanoids, and this is exactly what Pun Pun has been waiting for. Pun Pun uses his new ability to wild shape into a Saruk. Saruk are ancient snake-like creatures from the Forgotten Realms who were responsible for creating many of the reptilian races of the world, collectively called Scaled Ones. While in our Saruk form, we can use its supernatural ability, Manipulate Form. The Manipulate Form ability is meant to show off the Saruk's mad scientist sort of control over reptilian kind. For Pun Pun's purposes, we want to use Manipulate Form to give special abilities to Scaled Ones. Specifically, we want to be able to give ourselves the ability Manipulate Form itself, so we can keep it forever outside of the Saruk form. Unfortunately, we can't just give this ability directly to ourselves, as Saruk are immune to their own Manipulate Form effect. But you know who we can give it to? Our sweet little snake buddy! Our viper familiar qualifies as a scaled one, and so we can use manipulate form to give our viper the ability manipulate form. 
Then we change back into our kobold self, and wouldn't you know, kobolds are skilled ones too. So we command our snake buddy to use manipulate form to give us manipulate form, and the entire world opens up in front of us. We can now use manipulate form ourselves to give ourselves any ability that any monster or class has in any book. Do we want the anti-magic carapace of the Terrask? Boom, got it. Slow fall from the monk? We got it. We can even combine abilities for extra fun. The Zodar from the Fiend Folio has invulnerability to all weapon damage except bludgeoning, and the Snowflake Ooze from the Monster Manual 3 has immunity to bludgeoning damage. Give both of those to ourselves, we're simply immune to weapon damage. And it only gets crazier from here. In 3.5, all spells could be cast as spell-like abilities by monsters and things. And so we can give ourselves spell-like abilities. We can give ourselves the ability to cast any and all spells at will without having to use spell slots or components. This allows us to do a bunch of silly things, including trading the Wu Gen spell Giant Size from Complete Arcane back and forth between ourselves and our Viper, and using Manipulate Form to double our strength score each time to an arbitrarily high number. We can then use abilities from two other books, Complete Warrior and Complete Divine, to copy that strength score among our other ability scores, raising all our ability scores to any arbitrarily high number. With this, you might think Pun Pun some kind of god, but you'd be mistaken. 3.5 has very specific rules about becoming a god. But we can get around that too. I won't get into it, but it's a fun trick that involves an army of divine squirrels, and when all is said and done, a god is Pun Pun. And it doesn't stop there. Pun Pun's thread was filled with optimizers, all of them scouring the rule books for new combinations to give Pun Pun new, absurd abilities. Infinite actions in one turn, arbitrarily high movement speed, limitless combat reach, even across planes. He had as many hit dice as he wanted. He could even make his attack rolls, skill checks, and saving throw bonuses infinitely large. Knowing all this, it's no surprise that Pun Pun became a known entity in high school cafeterias, dorm rooms, and living rooms all around the nation. So why share Pun Pun with you? Well, mostly it's because I'm a geek. And I love the history of our game, and I like sharing it, and sharing the amazing anecdotes that come with it, like the time we broke the game with a lowly kobold. Of course, you weren't supposed to actually play Pun Pun. Pun Pun's fun, fun, was in the abstract. He was a thought exercise. He was a way to examine and play with the huge interconnected system of rules that 3.5 D&D had set up. And I also wanted to show you a little bit of where D&D used to be, to give you some context for where D&D is now. By the time 4th edition had come out, 3.5 had released over five dozen splat books, and they often did not play nice together. This is not to say that 3.5 was a bad edition, and there are lots of things about it that lots of people miss. But there was an obvious reaction against it, going the other direction, and the design philosophy of 5th edition. The rules for 5th edition purposefully leave much of the periphery details to the table. They don't just make playing the rules easy, they make creating your own rules easy. The advantage and disadvantage mechanic, backgrounds, subclasses, feats, and spells, these were all bite-sized pieces of design that are easy for the DM and players to play with, riff on, and create whole cloth. And this isn't some closely guarded secret. One of the first Unearthed Arcana articles for 5th edition was how to design homebrew in line with the 5th edition design philosophy. So you can see how where we are is, in part, at least, because of where we were in 2005, where the rules of the game let us ascend a lowly kobold into untouchable godhood. Pun pun. Yup. Hey guys. So that was a little bit different than what I normally do, but I hope you guys enjoyed it anyway. I was trying to experiment with form a little bit, see what else I can do on this channel. I'll probably be going back to deep dives and particular rules topics pretty soon. Um, I expect shortly after all the holidays are over and we enter the new year. And I'd be remiss not to remind everyone that I have my own adventure published on the DMs Guild just a couple months ago, The Heist at Nimressa which is an open-ended heist adventure on the edge of a despotic barony. Thanks for watching. I'd love to keep talking with you guys in the comments, keep the conversation going. But until then, see you next time.